I'm Jamie Kalb, an application engineer at Go Engineer, and this is an introduction to the assembly visualization tool in SolidWorks. I'll take you through what assembly visualization is and how to use it. Assembly visualization is a tool in SolidWorks that lets you take a closer look at the parts in an assembly. You can sort them by properties and automatically color them so you can see separate components at a glance. You can also use it to build tables based on properties and export those tables to Excel. To use assembly visualization, open up your assembly in SOLIDWORKS, then go to the Evaluate tab in the Command Manager and click on Assembly Visualization. You'll see a table pop up in the Design Manager area on the left. It lists all the components in the assembly ordered by properties, by default the file name, quantity, and mass. Clicking on a column sorts by that property, in increasing or decreasing order indicated by the arrow under the name. There are a couple of viewing options. First, clicking this icon with these horizontal bars toggles a bar graph on the component names of whatever property you have selected. The next button over is the standard SOLIDWORKS image for part, and when you click it, it changes to the standard SOLIDWORKS image for assembly. This allows you to decide whether to display subassemblies on their own line or to break out all their components. The third icon is grouped view. It places all instances of the same component on the same line. You can select any property to sort the table by. To change which property a column is displaying, click on the arrow next to the column name. You can pick one of the suggested properties or click on more for all the options. Mass and material are very useful options. My personal favorite is rebuild time. This allows you to see which components are slowing down your assembly's updates after changes. You can then suppress, defeature, or set these components to lightweight to speed up your modeling. A similar option is graphics triangles. This relates to how graphically intensive the parts are, and is very helpful if things like rotating the model are slowing down. You can also sort by a custom property, or create a custom column, which is an equation based on existing properties. In the More dialog box, check the box for Use Formula. You can use the drop-down to enter properties and add operations. For example, the mass times the quantity. You can add more columns by clicking the arrow next to a column name and selecting Add Column. You can add up to four more columns this way. Once you've built a helpful table with your properties, you can export it to Excel. Click the arrow next to any column name and select Save As. If you like the structure of the table you've set up and want to use it in other assemblies, you can export it as a template by clicking the arrow next to any column name and choosing Save Style. Then, when you create your next table, click that arrow again and choose load style. You can also control the colors of the components. Clicking on this colored bar toggles the coloring on or off, and dragging these sliders controls the range of color. You can also click in the open area between the sliders to add another one in another color. To edit the color of a slider, right-click on it and select Change Color. It's a nice little trick for quickly making it very visually clear where one part ends and another begins, instead of a giant mass of SOLIDWORKS default gray. I hope this video has given you some insight into how to use assembly visualization to explore an assembly. Once again, I'm Jamie Kalb with Go Engineer, and this has been an introduction to assembly visualization in SOLIDWORKS.